Roughly, 9,000 nuclear weapons are hidden away in bunkers and missile silos, stored in warehouses, at airfields and naval bases, and carried by dozens of submarines across the world. One can destroy a whole city, potentially killing millions and jeopardizing the natural environment and lives of future generations through its long-term catastrophic effects. The dangers from such weapons arise from their very existence. Dismantle or disarmament is the best protection against such dangers. But is it possible to dismantle nuclear weapons? Dealings on atomic demilitarization are politically tricky. But if everyone agrees on the same thing, scientists and engineers can provide a variety of solutions to dismantle some of humanity's most deadly weapons and store or repurpose the dangerous nuclear material. Though it's a long and complex procedure, but it's worthy. According to experts, this complex process begins with the blueprints that the designers used to create the weapon in the first place. It is like any other type of machine, it is a matter of disassembling these weapons piece by piece. To dismantle a nuclear device, engineers need to know the exact sequence in which the device was connected when it was made. However, in the case of nuclear weapons, this is not too difficult, as only a few methods of designing them are used globally. But the biggest cause of trouble is the sophisticated and destructive hydrogen bomb. There are many different designs of making these, and therefore disassembly is very difficult. Unraveling the design is believed to be the most challenging part of the process because they think it's less about the nuclear material and more about the engineering. It would be significantly harder and therefore less likely that a team of engineers could disassemble a hydrogen bomb without knowing the exact design sequence, but still not technically impossible. It's very unlikely that it would blow up if a mistake was made in the process of disassembly, unless it was designed to blow up in that eventuality, which is possible though not likely. Plant agrees the worst case scenario is accidental detonation, but there are other possible perils if disassembly goes wrong. The people doing it could be electrocuted or exposed to the nuclear material or other toxic chemicals. But a country, knowing its own design, would have been able to set apart its own modern nuclear weapons. Before any nuclear dismantling can even take place, the right political atmosphere must exist. Once the weapon is detached, the process of dealing with what is left is the same for both older and more sophisticated bombs. If all countries decide to reduce their reserves, we will have enough plutonium left. Now the question is, what can we do with the remaining uranium or plutonium? You might be thinking about to repurpose the radioactive material, either plutonium or uranium, to produce electricity. To make it suitable for a power plant, the material needs to be diluted with less enriched versions. It is also important to know that there are no power reactors anywhere in the world that are designed to deal with weapons-grade material. You have to downblend it before you can turn it into fuel. But that isn't what actually happens to most of the radioactive material. It's not always economically viable. It can be cheaper to enrich new material than it is to downgrade it and repurpose it. Shipping plutonium or uranium all over the place from storage to reactor isn't popular either. Decommissioning the radioactive waste and keeping it safe is a science in its own right. The extracted uranium or plutonium will contain different isotopes, variants of themselves that have different atomic masses which means their radioactivity decays at different rates. The highly radioactive isotopes have short half-lives, which means they decay much faster than the less radioactive ones, and that creates a lot of heat. The material has to be put in water pools for about half a decade to cool the rods while they decay. The less radioactive isotopes are slower to decay which presents its own problem. They have nuclei that are heavier, so they have very long half-lives of millions of years and you still have to do something with them. You can't just leave them hanging around.
Another thing we can do is to store the radioactive rods in specially designed containers, often called dry casks. These vessels are usually made from steel and welded shut to prevent leaking. Each of the casks is then encased in another steel shell and then in a thick layer of concrete to prevent radiation escaping. If you were standing outside of the container, then you wouldn't be able to detect radiation. But even this containment option has its drawbacks. The cost of building, maintaining, and monitoring these facilities will never go away so long as the rods inside are producing radiation. That's basically eternity for humans. Additionally, there's national security to consider. Governments will be keeping it somewhere safe in case they want to reuse it or in case a terrorist trying to get hold of it. Now there is a third option which usually followed, and that is partial disassembly. After all, unless the bomb is detonated, the nuclear material inside is in a steady and contained state. Partial disassembly keeps it there while removing the opportunity for the bomb to be used. If you remove the trigger, then what's left can't be used as a bomb. But partial disassembly is reversible. The trigger can be put back in and the warhead can therefore be reactivated. So overall we can say that it's possible to dismantle nuclear weapons, but to do so in a large quantity, we have to devise some solution for that. If you think this video is informative, do like the video and subscribe the channel. May science bless you.